Hey guys, I'm Kyle. Welcome back to the channel today and welcome back to the podcast. Now, it's been a couple weeks since I have uh, last done a video. Uh, this one, um, I've been kind of stressing about making it for a while, so I'm sorry that it's delayed. Uh, but anyways, today I want to talk about the Freckle Shack, Ben Ven's newest uh, backlit Game Boy Color mod. I released the reveal video for the Freckle Shack like four-ish weeks ago, and it's really taken off. Um, like right out of the gate, it got 30 some thousand views. Um, and I wanna thank you guys so much for making that possible and for being part of that release. That was really exciting for me and for Ben, and it was my biggest uh, video uh, yet. It was, I would consider it bigger than the um, Joey a tutorial, the 40 minute long video that I did. So this is basically just a follow up to it, sharing details and visuals and various things about uh, the Freckle Shack. Um, a lot of people want to see gameplay and things like that. I do want to say that if you're just listening to this podcast right now, maybe you've minimized the window um, and you're not actually watching it, Make sure that you come back and watch it later on if you're not able to right now, just because I'm going to be showing off a lot of visuals, um, uh, different gameplay, and just a lot of things, uh, interesting things that people have been asking to see. And um, basically, I went through the comments of the Freckle Shack reveal video and saw what all people wanted to see, what the most common questions were. And um, I'm basically just presenting about that today, just answering questions, showing stuff off. Yeah, I'm probably going to end up jumping from topic to topic in this video, so just bear with me. Uh, if you have a question at the beginning here, chances are I will be answering it um, throughout the course of this video. A lot of other YouTubers recently have also gotten their kits and have been reviewing the Freckle Shack and showing off their build videos. Uh, Esoteric Sean uh, has done a video where his girlfriend built it. Um, the Retro Future also did a release as well um, with a really cool Game Boy Color shell. Um, gave me some ideas for some future builds that I wanna do. Uh, besides that though, uh, go ahead and watch their videos, support them on their channels. Uh, they've got a lot of cool footage to show off and stuff. So if you haven't seen any other videos, go ahead and check them out. Where am I? Um, you'll notice that I'm probably looking down just like my last podcast. Um, I've got a script here, more so an outline of just basic points that I want to make. So that's why I'm just kind of looking down here and reading through what I want to talk about. One thing that I do want to say uh, right off the bat is things in general with Ben Venn and I have kind of come full circle uh, with the Freckle Shack. How he and I first initially connected and started working together was actually through my very first backlit Game Boy Color uh, tutorial video where I actually show how to build this janky one where there is that space in uh, the shell there. You see it didn't fully close up. It just looks like it's not complete. I also screwed up and like scraped out the inside of it with my uh, rotary tool right there. So it cuts through the shell. Um, I don't know whether to be proud or ashamed of it. It's It works. It works really well. The only thing is that it does have some quirks. The power switch is really loose and sort of broken. Um, not a lot of current can pass through it. So it shuts off prematurely when you put it under load. I need to fix that. Uh, that's something that I have planned for a future video eventually. But I don't know, I it's kind of got some charm to it. I might just keep it the way that it is. Basically, it was my first ever handheld or console mod ever. And um, it's how Ben and I connected. So it's just interesting now to think how things have come full circle between, between him and I uh, with the Freckle Shack build where that's how we started things and started working together. And now it's just cool to think that this is where we are. This is where we've, where we've come. This is how far we've come. This is where we've gotten to. Anyways, the Freckle Shack and the GBC 101 mod, I mean, between my first one and the Freckle Shack mod, there is a night and day difference between these consoles. Uh, this one, it, while it does work and it's, and it's nice, um, it's cool to have a backlit Game Boy Color. It, was, it wasn't without some difficulty that it got built. Um, on the other hand, this one feels like it came from the factory backlit. It's, I can't explain it guys, it just feels and looks 
so nice. Uh, but I'll get into all of that. I've actually got several different sections in this podcast that I kind of want to just step through. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is, uh, this is where I said I was going to jump around from topic to topic. Uh, this is where I want to talk about extra details about the mod, extra tweaks that you can do, and just other important details that I wanted to share with you guys. So uh, first I want to talk about the LCD. Um, the most important thing of this entire tutorial that I want to tell you guys is that because of a discrepancy between the, uh, like for the components that the factory in China was using to build the Freckle Shack prototype kits, um, they used slimmer um, components, a lot thinner components on the PCB for my prototypes, uh, prototypes, um, long story. I got two from Ben, one broke right out of the box. It wasn't my fault. It was just, there was a clip he was testing on it. Anyways, um, my prototypes and Ben's prototypes were slightly different than your production models. Uh, the production models of the Freckle Shack, particularly with batches one, two, and part of batch three, uh, they have thicker components on them, which means that when you smush the PCB and the LCD together in the shell, what will happen is the aluminum on the back of the LCD will arc and short against the uh, components on the PCB. And so it'll bridge all of those, uh, a lot of those contacts and you'll get a white screen uh, when you boot up your Game Boy Color. Obviously, the Freckle Shack isn't supposed to have just a white screen and prevent the Game Boy Color from, from booting up. Uh, so you actually have to insulate the back of the LCD with Captain tape or some kind of tape. Even a piece of paper would help. I don't know how ESD safe a piece of paper is against electronics, but I mean, it works. People have tried it and they've done it when they haven't had any tape and it's worked just fine. So just make sure that at least if you're batch one, two, or three of Freckle Shack orders, that you insulate the back of the LCD housing. Like I'll, I'll probably put up some footage here and show you how to do that as I'm, as I'm talking about it. Regardless of what batch you are, insulate the back of your LCD just to be safe since it's aluminum so close to electrical components. I mean, they're so close together, just maybe a, a hair breadth apart. With that out of the way now, let's talk about battery life. The expected battery life for the Freckle Shack kit is around 15 to 20 hours, but keep in mind that whatever cart you use, depending on whether it's a genuine Nintendo cart or a bootleg from China, or it's um, a cart with a rumble pack on it, or a multi-ROM cart, whatever it may be, different carts use different amounts of power. And most of the genuine Nintendo ones, um, just the normal generic Game Boy and Game Boy Color carts use around the same amount. I don't know the exact measurements, um, but that's the rule of thumb. Now, a lot of bootlegs out there, most of them are pretty safe, but there are a select few models that tend to use a little bit more power than most. Um, and they really just are not efficient at all. So those will typically nuke your battery anyways. With the release of this podcast, I've also released a time-lapse uh, video of the battery life test that I ran on my modded Game Boy Color. Uh, so I've put a link to that in the description below. Check it out. It's actually kind of interesting. You really be uh, surprised at how long this battery can actually last. So take a look at that once you get a chance. Also take a look at Jelly Belly Customs uh, on his website. He posted an article that breaks down the Freckle Shack uh, compare and compares it to the McWill mod kit as well as an original Game Boy Color um, and their battery life with using a couple of aftermarket carts and a genuine Game Boy Tetris cart. Uh, basically, it's just it breaks down the figures and tells what power consumption is, what battery life is uh, for various uh, setups. So take a look at that. It's really interesting. It's very detailed. I've put a link to that uh, in the description below as well. So go ahead and check out his article on his website. I also want to say too, this is me jumping around, um, that since no glue is used, like I was forced to use glue on my original GBC 101 build because there's no screws 
here on these top four screw posts on a GBC 101 modded system. The only screws that are used are the ones that are in here. So the top part of this Game Boy Color would pull apart and I didn't really have any ability to put it back together, to hold it together with anything else. And I didn't want to use like tape on the edge here to hold it together. It would just look silly. The mod was so young at that point, backlighting the Game Boy Color, that I didn't know how to close the thing up. So it was kind of a little bit left up to interpretation until better and better things started coming around, like some 3D printed screw posts by Ben and um, gluing just the corners with hot glue, uh, also making things inside of it, components inside of it, as thin as possible so that everything would go together. Hence my revised um, part two video of the GBC 101 mod. The Freckle Shack build doesn't have glue. Uh, it's not held together by glue. It's actually, it utilizes all six screw posts. So there is camera focus. There's uh, screws there, 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 and then also underneath the battery compartment right there. If I take out the bottom battery, you'll see that it uses those screw posts as well. Camera, please focus. Is it focused? Yeah, okay. But it uses all six screw posts. And um, so that's kind of neat that because of the size of the components inside of the Freckle Shack, because of that mod itself, you don't have to cut anything out of the shell. Uh, you have to cut a small little strip of plastic out of the bottom of the LCD bracket, but that's it. Um, and then everything fits together really comfortably, really. Basically what I was getting at was you can reopen the Freckle Shack Game Boy Color to get at components again, to, to add things or adjust things, or you could even undo the mod if you wanted to. You could put an original original uh, Game Boy Color screen back inside of your Freckle Shack modded Game Boy Color. So um, that's really exciting to me. I actually got some dust. I'll probably put some pictures up here, uh, but I got some dust somehow inside of the space between the LCD and the glass lens. Um, somehow some flecks of dust or uh, fuzz got in there and were driving me nuts. But because of how the Freckle Shack kit is built, since it uses all the screws and you can, it's the mod is not invasive at all. You don't have to solder things to the board or do all sorts of crazy things um, to like lift the pin three on the bias regulator chip. It's just so easy to take apart and get in there and do whatever you want to it, to clean it up or to get dust out of there or to try fitting things a little bit differently um, or lining up the LCD again if you messed it up. I also, um, aside from taking it apart in one instance, taking apart my console to clean the dust out, I also took it apart another time to uh, actually add the original D-pad for the Game Boy Color back into my console. Uh, I've also put a link below to that whole story and the reason why that D-pad had to go back in, basically with a glitch with some games, the aftermarket D-pads just are problematic with the way that they're built. Um, the Game Boy Color isn't meant to take input from all four directions on the D-pad at the same time, which the aftermarket D-pads allow you to press, um, whereas the original one does not. It rocks back and forth. I've put a link in the description to that video so you can see more about that. Um, but that was like the second or third time that I opened up the my modded Game Boy Color to swap that out and put everything back together and it still works. Everything works great. Um, nothing broke. I wasn't worried about breaking anything or miss it, messing up the alignment on the LCD. And then there was a entirely separate time where I needed to take some pictures uh, for someone writing an article on the video, writing an article on the Freckle Shack uh, build process. And so I had to take pictures for him of the inside. And during that process, I actually also had placed tape inside of the shell to um, hold the PCB in place and everything. Basically, I just, I'm just trying to kind of show that it's so wonderful how this mod works because you can just take things apart again. Looking at my next item on my script here, uh, people have been asking, do you need to purchase a separate Game Boy Color shell and a separate special uh, screen lens 
to do the Freckle Shack build? The answer is no. Uh, you don't have to. You can use all original components. You can have just an original Game Boy Color console and the Freckle Shack kit, and that's all you need. Uh, you can still use the original lens that your Game Boy Color came with, um, scratches and all, if it's a used, pretty well used one. And you can use the original shell and modify and pull that little plastic strip out of the bottom of the LCD bracket. It'll work just fine. But since you've already got things apart, it kind of makes more sense to just do a full build. Plus, I know a lot of people get picky about the modifying of plastics and shells of original uh, hardware, original um, the original plastics for the Game Boy Color or whatever retro gaming console. So people get really picky about that. So all in all, that's why I opted to use a third party shell, an aftermarket shell for my build. I kind of wanted to just do my best to try to please everybody. I didn't want to manipulate original stuff. I mean, the aftermarket shells are a dime a dozen. So, I mean, why not just burn one of those just to 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 break part of it? Um, yeah, so I just didn't want to tick anybody off with that. And plus, I've always wanted to do a white build anyways. I'm, I love this color. <laughs> it just looks really, really nice, um, in my opinion. Another quick detail is that Jelly Belly Customs actually uh, created a guide, um, a guide on his website for uh, basically talking about these aftermarket shells, which ones to look out for, which ones are not like the other, which ones are basically how to modify each of them. The general mod stays the same, but some of them do require a little bit of extra trimming. So mine was actually pretty run of the mill in my video, but there are some other shells floating around that are made a little bit differently. They're molded slightly differently where you need to do some more trimming for things to fit just right. So I've put a link in the description below again for that article as well. Lastly, I wanted to talk about safety glasses. A lot of people were like, wow, so you need all of these tools and things and then you need a pair of safety glasses. Really? Like, what's the deal? Look, I don't want anyone to get hurt if they do attempt these mods and stuff. And with a particular part in the tutorial where you're trimming the pins off the back of the Game Boy Color's PCB, there's metal fragments flying around the air. I mean, have you ever gotten metal fragments in your eye? I have. It is extremely painful, and you can actually lose your vision from that kind of stuff. So I stand by that decision to have the safety glasses as a recommendation in there. Do you have to use them? No, you don't have to. I can't twist your arm and make you do anything. But there are times and circumstances with in which someone can really get hurt uh, with a metal fragment flying into their eye. So if people do attempt that, I accept no responsibility. I'm just showing if you want to, this is how probably the best way you can do things is. Sorry, not sorry. It may be weird, but <laughs> deal with it. Okay, so the next thing that people have been wanting to know about is the display. Everybody has been bothering me about these specs. I've got them all written out here, so let's jump into them. First, I wanna just kinda of tell you guys, I measured the uh, width of these displays, um, of the actual display area across and not diagonally, um, just because like we've got the GB boy out there right now where it's got like a scrunched screen um, where it, it just, it's the wrong display ratio. It just squishes the, the display of the Game Boy Color, um, the actual image that goes on the screen. the All of the screens nowadays for the mods for the Game Boy Color itself um, are actually a one-to-one -one, uh, display ratio. They're the exact same display ratio as the original screen. So to get into measurements, the original Game Boy Color LCD is 43.5 millimeters across. In contrast, the AGS-101, uh, its display area on the uh, screen itself, the little square that it has for the Game Boy Color readout uh, is measured at 40.5 millimeters across. So it's three millimeters less uh, across than the original display. And then the Freckle Shack display is 
two millimeters across. So it is ever so slightly smaller than the display area on an AGS-101 screen. And it's 4.3 millimeters smaller than the image on an original Game Boy Color display. It's really not that big of a difference, guys. The screens are relatively in the same neighborhood of the same size. They're all right around 40 millimeters across. It's really not a big deal. Um, the reason that I say that is it was a bit of a strain sometimes to see the image on the original Game Boy Color's reflective LCD. Now with these backlit screens, because they're backlit, you don't notice that they're smaller. I had fully admit that I was skeptical at first too. Like, okay, how much smaller is the image now? I mean, it's a Game Boy Color, it's a little square display, how much smaller can we make it? It's not that big of a difference. Just in general gameplay, looking at the screen, it looks smaller when you see just pictures of it online where people are people are playing it or whatever. It does look smaller unless it's right in front of you. And honestly, in my humble opinion, it just doesn't make that much of a difference with a slightly smaller display, given I don't want to see them get any smaller. But I was a skeptic too until I first saw them. So I mean, whatever display you kit you do you decide to buy, um, whether it's the McWill, the Midwest Embedded uh, kit, or the Freckle Shack kit, I mean, they all use the same LG display. So, I mean, they're all going to be the same size. Just some people are picky. I get it. They don't want to lose any more um, image space on the screen. It's the Freckle Shack kit utilizes the very best screen for the job just because the Game Boy Color screen is a Sanyo display made specifically for the Game Boy Color. It is so unique in its size, in its um, pixel, in its resolution. It's just so special, um, so specially designed that there is no exact one-to-one -one equivalent of it out there. And to fire up an assembly line to make those displays, a backlit Game Boy Color display made spe specifically for the Game Boy Color, could cost upwards of $100,000. It just economically doesn't make sense. So for the people who complain about the LCD being too small, honestly, the Freckle Shack's LCD, the LG display, whether it's the McWill Midwest Embedded Kit or the Freckle Shack Kit, that is the very best display for this mod that is available right now. Ben is testing another uh, display that could potentially provide the same ease of install. Um, it might require a little bit more case modding uh, to get it to fit, but probably nothing anywhere near what the AGS-101 requires. So just know that st it's still being worked on a full one-to-one -one size backlit screen for the Game Boy Color is still being pursued, but we're just not there. It's There's not the availability of something like that. These LG screens are available in huge quantities. They're just sitting in a warehouse, uh, hundreds of thousands of them, and um, they're just sitting there, so why not use them? Plus, they're incredibly inexpensive. I don't remember what the actual cost was, but economically speaking, um, dollar per dollar speaking, it just makes the most sense. In the end though, I do understand people's concerns. I really do. But in my honest opinion, because the screen is now backlit, the missing four and a half millimeters, or what was it? It was 4.3 millimeters of space across on the display. Um, just doesn't make that much of a difference because it's backlit. You just don't notice it. Don't take my word for it, but that's my opinion. On a different note, uh, the original GBC 101 screen lenses that were made by Bluish Squirrel or anyone else online, because the size of the Freckle Shack is just a little bit and the placement is slightly different within the, the Game Boy Color shell, you can't use those screen lenses. You have to, if you want an actual border for the Freckle Shack kit's LCD, 
you have to get a specially made screen lens with the square in the right position and the right size. You can't reuse the old stuff. So just going off of my list of specs um, in no particular order, I'm just gonna run through some more technical things. So the LG display that I've already talked about in the Freckle Shack kit, it is a color active matrix LCD. Its resolution is 320 by 320 pixels. And the original LCD uh, for the Game Boy Color is 160 pixels by 144 pixels. So this means that the image on screen is linearly, linearly scaled uh, with a one-to-one -one display ratio. There's no scrunched image, um, unlike the GB Boy, where it squishes the image because there's not as much vertical space on that display. Um, the pixel pattern is repeating RGB, pixel pitch, the space between pixels is 0.12 millimeters. Power consumption is 160 milliwatts. The average pixel response time is 35 to 40 milliseconds. Contrast ratio with backlight on is 120 to one. Backlight brightness is 160 candela. And with the backlight on, the viewing angle can approach 75 to 90 degrees. People have also been concerned about whether or not there is ghosting on the Freckle Shack display like there is on the AGS-101 displays from China. There is no ghosting. Uh, the image is so crispy clear and no smearing of colors or pixels or anything. No ghosting whatsoever on this display. A cool feature of the Freckle Shack kit is that you can see the display in direct sunlight with the console on. Um, there is a reflector behind the display. It's a transflective display. So it um, you can see it in direct sunlight without hindrance. It's actually really cool. I've got a little video of, uh, clip of it here so you can see um, just how well that works. Uh, there's It's really crystal clear. Um, I was quite surprised by this. Um, a lot of people had problems seeing the display for the GBC 101 mod. Um, and even the Game Boy Color, the original unmodded system, is kind of hard to see in the sunlight. I mean, you have to have, you have to be holding that system just right. So the fact that you can finally enjoy your Game Boy Color, um, just like I was in that video clip, uh, on a perfectly sunny day, I mean, the sun was at high noon. It was shining straight down on me. So the fact that you can enjoy the Game Boy Color in direct sunlight now, just outside or wherever, inside, outside, cloudy skies, overcast, or sunny is really pretty neat. Now, I do want to say too that uh, in the footage that you guys are seeing, my proto board is programmed in such a way that the display is tinted ever so slightly a bluish color. So the colors might look a little more blue or um, not washed out, but just different than normal. This was fixed on the production models uh, so that the screen, uh, the color is less blue um, and it's more um, just the, it's more, it more closely resembles the image that it's supposed to be. So it resembles the color uh, set up like on the GBC 101 mod. Now let's talk about, oh yeah, this is, a, this is a good spot. There was a glitch with the Freckle Shack. This is what I've kind of dubbed the Pokemon Pinball white screen glitch. Uh, essentially, a couple weeks back, Ben stopped the release rollout of the Freckle Shack because there is a white screen issue on some games, specifically Pokemon Pinball between frames, where the screen would just go white and not respond for a split second, uh, and then would come back on, and especially on po games like Pokemon Pinball, that's not conducive to, to fluid gameplay. The glitch exists because Game Freak literally broke the rules of programming for the Game Boy Color uh, when they were making the game. And it literally, they programmed it to turn the display off when switching frames. So when you're on the pinball screen, you're playing a game, you're at the bottom of the board, and then the ball rolls up to the top of the board, the screen will go white. Ben opted to find a way to fix it, to uh, fix this white screen issue. And he went so far as to offer an option for people to send their affected kits back to him to have them replaced with 
uh, kits, PCBs that had new firmware on it with a fix to prevent this issue that sidestepped the whole turning off the LCD issue um, that Game Freak created. I mean, Ben followed the rules when creating the kit so that things worked the way they were supposed to work. Um, but Game Freak is the one, they're the ones who created this problem to begin with. You just don't turn off the display mid-gameplay. But for some reason, their system was made to do that. Anyways, this kind of thing is rare. Specifically in the fact that a designer of a mod like Ben, I have massive amounts of respect for this guy. He doesn't have a greedy or indecent bone in his body. He's He loves modding for the sake of modding. He's not in it for the money. The fact that he was able to, at a loss, uh, a, a loss of, of, of money, that he's poured so much money into this project to create this mod, he went and he is taking the loss to take these kits back to send people new ones that work the way that they expect them to. Which, whatever side of the argument you're on, I, I feel personally that Ben didn't have the, any obligation to do this, but he did because he's a good person. Um, I know him personally and I'm just so just astounded that he went so far as he did to make this right for people. So he deserves a round of applause from the community for doing that, for wanting to do that for people. There may have been an oversight with games that he tested on um, with, when beta testing. But the problem is, you know what to look for when you're testing. You can't test with every single possible game, but you do expect, you just kind of expect a studio as renowned as Game Freak um, or Capcom or whoever else to follow the rules when programming for the Game Boy Color or for any system. And unfortunately, in this situation, Game Freak did not. There's roughly over 2,000 titles available for the Game Boy Color, plus aftermarket and obscure cartridges and ROMs everywhere. So there's no way, it's, it's near impossible to test everything, every circumstance, every setup, every, um, every kind of gameplay situation. It's just, it's impossible. Uh, so unfortunately, stuff like this does happen. Technology in a given field is expected to be designed and work and function within a certain spec. And when that stuff fails, it, I mean, it, it's not common in these kinds of situations, but it does happen. Um, the GBC 101 ribbon got several revisions. The Freckle Shack has gotten one or two revisions already because of this situation. But I, I, I know personally from the development of this in talking with Ben that a lot of time and care was put into testing this system thoroughly and when building it, programming it, and testing code and different versions of firmware. It's just a huge time sink. So props to Ben for being on top of his game and taking care of people in the best way possible. Um, kudos, Ben. Great job. I also want to say, for the people who were getting upset with Ben, there weren't many, but there were a few who were just like, wow, why didn't you test everything, every game? We thought that this was fully vetted and was the the, the way to go, the, the mod to do, the dream mod for the Game Boy Color. <laughs> I, I, wrote, I wrote this down in my script because it's, we so easily forget, Microsoft, the multi-billion dollar company, Microsoft, that has been around for over 30 years, they release buggy software all the time. Take Windows 10, for example. I mean, any updates they release. I mean, daily, you see reports online of, oh, a new Windows update broke a thousand computers that got the update earlier or something like that. Um, it happens all the time. Microsoft makes these mistakes. And they, they make them on a huge scale and they make them very often. I mean, they did it with Windows Vista, Windows 8, 8.1, and obviously Windows 10. But I mean, they're probably one of the worst <laughs> at this, releasing buggy software. So um, given that Ben went and fixed someone else's mistake, it, <laughs> it's he doesn't owe anybody that. He doesn't owe anyone his time spent doing that, but he did anyways, because he's a good person. So just, if you get the chance, thank him for doing that. I can't say that enough. 
Developing electronics is a pain. I wouldn't want to do it. Just know that this stuff does happen. In cases of Microsoft and some other Fortune 500 companies, they happen often, daily, all the time. So take that as you will. Next, let's talk about what comes with the kit, how you get one, shipping, any costs, what does the kit cost, um, things like that. So uh, the kit comes with a display, the Freckle Shack PCB, spacers for placing the screen in the shell, uh, a custom Game Boy Light, uh, Game Boy Color Light sticker uh, for the back of the console. Um, that's all what comes in the kit. Uh, my kit was shipped early when the Game Boy Color Light uh, sticker wasn't ready yet. Uh, so typically these aftermarket shells come with a sticker for the back themselves already. So I just put that generic um, random sticker on there uh, just because I didn't have the Game Boy Color Light one uh, yet. The sticker is really pretty. It's printed in full color. Um, so... Uh, you really get a lot of bang for your buck with this product. Ben really packages things up into one complete kit um, with all of the fixings. So uh, add a lens to that from Jelly Belly Customs, which keep in mind, that does not come with the Freckle Shack kit from Ben Ven. You have to buy that separately. But put those all together and you have a pretty awesome system. Uh, story behind the 3D printed spacers actually. So... Originally, the 3D printed spacers for the LCD were not going to be included. Um, when I was making the, the Freckle Shack reveal video, I actually kind of goofed and messed up um, because I made the video around those spacers. Ben sent me a couple sets of them for my kits for the, the making of the video. And he said, hey, these are just extras. Um, he did tell me that these weren't part of what was going to be shipped. So, hey, like he didn't specifically say it, but we it was just kind of assumed that, okay, well, I'll show how to glue the Game Boy Color um, together to glue the LCD in and stuff. But somewhere that got lost in translation. I got hung up on filming the... I mean, I, I worked for weeks on that script. It was many pages long. And I just got hung up on the fact that, wow, these spacers make things so easy. And so I had filmed everything, everything was done. And then I thought, I wonder if Ben is planning to include these. <laughs> you would have thought that I would have asked him this from the get-go, which I did, but with all the stuff that was on his mind and on my mind, it kind of fell by the wayside and certain things were assumed of me and of him from either of our sides. And so um, the video got made with the spacers and using them, and they weren't supposed to be. Uh, so <laughs> Ben, when Ben and I were trying to figure this out, like literally it was five days from, re from video release. And I was trying to, that was part of the hangup actually. Some of you might remember that Ben posted something on his Facebook saying, that um, uh, the video was going to be delayed because of some unforeseen circumstances. That was the unforeseen for circumstance because Ben watched an early uh, render of the video, of the Freckle Shack reveal. And, um, hold on a second. <laughs> he watched an early render of the Freckle Shack reveal and he saw, wow, the kit does go together really well. Um, with the spacers, no glue or anything. P I, people are going to love this. We have to include the spacers. It's just, we have to, it'll make it easier. And I was just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I just costed Ben so much money because then immediately after we had that conversation, he went and bought another 3d printer specifically for printing these spacers like 24 seven for the next couple of weeks. So he had the hundreds of sets that he needed to send out with kits. Um, I felt so bad because I just costed him all that money to do that. Um, so <laughs> just kind of a funny situation that ended for the best, but it still kind of took away from his profit margin because of a mistake on my part. Um, 
we were both so busy though at the time too that he forgot, I forgot. I I take credit for that though, for that mistake. But another thing about Ben is that he wasn't afraid to be like, yeah, you know what? They really make the build process easier. They should be included. I was very humbled by that when he he um, so graciously let me off the hook for costing him more money uh, to do this. So yeah, <laughs> so that's why those spacers are now included and they weren't originally. Uh, there was some confusion because there was a download link to the 3D file on the site um, where you could download and print your own. There was no word about them being included. Then he updated the site after all of this to say, yes, they're actually included. So yeah, <laughs> that's the story behind that. Uh, to distribute his tech worldwide, not just the Freckle Shack kits, um, Ben is working with local distributors around the world to bring shipping costs down and get things into the consumer's hands, your guys' hands, for cheaper, uh, to get his mods out there much faster uh, and more, more efficiently and more effectively to get things to the end user, to modders just like you and me. Um, so to go with that, the Freckle Shack kit originally was $70, but now batch four, which comes with a brightness adjustment feature, which you can choose to use or not. It's one wire that you solder to the PCB. Um, that one with that extra feature is now $60. <laughs> uh, wow, you really get a lot of value for for this kit, guys. Since Ben is working with distributors in all regions to get this kit out there, um, shipping prices are also dropping as well, um, just because now he can ship things out in bulk to a distributor and then they can take care of the distribution from there um, locally. So shipping costs are lower. He can't promise anything, but you can probably expect those prices to continue to fall at least a little bit as far as shipping goes. Um, again, there's only so far that he can cut prices, but that's kind of an explanation on that. There's still the problem of getting around local and regional taxes for certain countries and uh, places around the world. There are just some countries and some places that because of inflation, because of conversion rates, it is too expensive or so expensive to get his products to those countries and to those locations. There's no way around that. That's not something that he's done artificially to, to prevent people from getting his tech. That is literally governments around the world causing any products, not just Ben's, but any products, any uh, imported goods into that country, these taxes and stuff, these tariffs prevent goods from going there because they become too expensive for people to buy. Uh, so there's nothing Ben can do about that. He's trying really hard to get things to a reasonable cost for people, but there's still that difficulty where there's just some things that are beyond his control uh, from a business standpoint and just shipping and distribution costs in general. Here are some of my final thoughts, and again, they're in no particular order. Um, I want to do a quick price comparison. So the AGS-101 display is $75-ish right now, um, and the 101 ribbons from Ben were $30 to $40 when they came out and uh, when they were um, the only option. So it used to cost over $100 to backlight a Game Boy Color yourself, um, with the AGS-101 kit, plus the hassle of ordering parts separately, ordering a screen from China, ordering the ribbon from Ben. It wasn't a full, concise one kit. And so there are some complaints from people about the Freckle Shack costing $70, $60, whatever the price is. And people are saying that they're just waiting for China to rip it off. That's just, that's just absurd. Um, Considering that China puts companies out of business every day for ripping off electronics and stuff like this, people just have to kind of understand that because of their extremely low-cost low sweatshop-style labor, they can pay someone a dollar a day, whereas in other countries, they're going to be paying someone $10 an hour 
Um, they're paying someone a hundred percent more for a job that China, because of their labor laws and stuff like that, there are companies and organizations over there that get away with cheap labor and have next to zero cost to produce goods and at a large scale too. I mean, companies go out of business every day because of China ripping them off. In the end, if China is involved with things like this, the customer always loses. It's <laughs> The real people making these things need to have some kind of incentive to keep going. And so they can't just charge for the cost to build their product. I mean, they have to, they have to make money at it. They have to have a reason to keep going. They have to have something that keeps them going and, and keeps them driven to keep innovating and doing things, uh, and making things. And this is true in any industry, not just the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance modding realm. Seeing comments about all of that just really frustrates me on a personal level because it really shows that some people out there don't really have an understanding of how economics really works. I mean, if someone spends $30 making a thing, they're not gonna sell it for $30. They're not gonna sell it for 20 or 10 or whatever um, because their cost in labor, in parts and whatever is just, it's that much. And then they wanna have a little bit on top to also cover uh, their time um, spent preparing the product and shipping and handling and anything else goes that, that goes with that. They can't just across the top not make anything on, on top of the product that they've created. There are costs associated with specifically with getting PCBs printed and produced in China. It's just really frustrating to me. Some people need to get it through their thick skulls that Ben is not a greedy person. He does not have a greedy bone in his body. I say that as his friend. And I'm sorry I'm getting a little animated here, but that is complete garbage that people are just gonna go and sit on a comment thread and say, oh, I can't, I'm just gonna wait for China to rip this off. Anybody can be a copycat. True innovation comes at a cost. Ben is an innovator. I am saying this as his friend, guys. I'm going to bat for him because this is complete bunk that people will go online and say this kind of stuff and that they're just going to wait for someone to rip them off. Ben created this mod. He, he invented this. Why not help him to continue creating things? I just... Oh my goodness, the the audacity of some people. Just <sighs> bottom line, anyone can be a copycat, but true innovation comes at a cost. Just remember that in any industry, in any anything in life. Um, I've <sighs> yeah, that's all I can really say about that. On the flip side, I can honestly say that I've never loved the feel and the look of the Game Boy Color so much. Um, just compared to the original system, I mean, the Freckle Shack kit has real heft to it. It feels, it feels good in your hands. It's got a really good weight to it. And it just feels so sturdy. It feels solid. It feels dense. It doesn't feel like there's all these pieces that are rattling around inside it because there's not. It just feels so nice in the hands and it's got just a good weight to it. You got some batteries in it. You got a game cartridge in there. It doesn't feel like it's going to break. Um, like I literally feel like I can casually just toss this into my backpack on my way out the door somewhere and I can bring it with me for an afternoon or on a trip or something and it's not going to break. Um, given I have to be careful with the glass lens, but I mean, even that's pretty sturdy too. I've never loved the look and feel of the Game Boy Color as much as I do now with the Freckle Shack kit installed. It's just really, really pretty. The Freckle Shack modded Game Boy Color also doesn't look cheap either. I mean, with the glass screen lens on here, I doubted this at first too. On my original backlit Game Boy Color, the AGS 101 build, I thought I just used an original um, Game Boy Color lens and 
I mean, there's a border around it and stuff uh, because I didn't use the um, a special bordered one. So you can see a white border around the screen. Um, and I mean, it's fine. It, it works. But there's nothing quite like the nice sheen of glass, especially on a Game Boy Color. Nobody's paying me. They're, they're not. Nobody's paying me to to say these things. Jelly Belly Customs has not paid me to to say that. Oh, go buy more screen lenses from him. I'm just saying from my experience, I was skeptical at first too. I thought, wow, if paying a few more, a few dollars more for another lens, um, ten or I, don't know, I can't remember how much they are, ten or fifteen dollars or something. Um, I really was skeptical too, but it really adds a nice finishing touch to the Game Boy and it makes it feel complete. And it's part of the main reason why the system feels and looks like a factory direct product. This feels like it came off the assembly line from Nintendo. Um, it just looks and feels so great. And the lens is the icing on the cake and it just makes it feel so complete. I love it. I just, I think it's a really good investment. If you're going to do the Freckle Shack kit, do it right. I just, if you're on the cheap, if you're doing it on the cheap and you've got a Game Boy Color, you want to just throw a kit in, you don't have to buy a lens. You don't have to buy a uh, another third-party shell. You don't have to buy a replacement shell. You can just use what you've got. But if you've got the extra few bucks to work with to spend the extra money on another shell, and also a few bucks to spend on a Jelly Belly Customs lens, then why not? Uh, I think it's a no-brainer at this point. All that to say, I feel that Matt at Jelly Belly Customs has really outdone himself with his screen lens. And not to mention, Ben has really outdone himself with the Freckle Shack kit, just overall. Um, I just feel like you get a lot of bang for your buck. That's my opinion. Again, I can't twist anybody's arm and make them buy something, but... Nobody's paying me to say those things. I just really believe in these products and, and the tech and everything and really like where Game Boy modding is going. Um, and having Ben and Jelly Belly Customs make these things, they're really high quality and they're really nice. Um, so consider picking some up. They're really worth the extra money. So to close, I do want to mention quick, recently BoxyPixel sent me an aluminum a Game Boy Color shell, and I want to show that off, but this video is a little long for that, so I'll be showing that off in a separate video uh, coming up soon here within the coming few weeks, so keep an eye out for that. The BoxyPixel aluminum shell for the Game Boy Color actually also works with the Freckle Shack kit. I'll have more details about that at that time, but stay tuned for that video. Uh, I also want to give a quick shout out for Esoteric Sean. Sean saved my butt at the last minute. In the 11th hour, I needed some extra footage uh, of the AGS 101 display, and I also wanted to use part of his GBC 101 tutorials to show in the Freckle Shack reveal video. And he, on the spot, like within a half hour of me asking him to send me some footage of him holding an AGS 101 display, he filmed it, put it in his Dropbox, and sent it to me. Sean has become a really great friend of mine, and I was blown away that he was able to help me out uh, so quickly. He was just a huge help um, with that whole process. So Sean, thank you so much for helping me out and saving me when I uh, needed it most. So thank you, brother. Anyways, at the end of the day, nobody is paying me to say these things that I'm saying in this video. They're not paying me to promote these products, um, whether it be Ben Ven, Jelly Belly Customs, um, Rourke Murdoch from Rourke's Retro Corner, uh, Boxy Pixel, or anyone else uh, in the realm of Game Boy modding, any mod designers and inventors out there. Um, they're not paying me to say the things that I do. Uh, I just really believe in this modding scene, this modding community, and what everybody's doing to make new cool things. And I especially love what what those guys are doing in their designs and their mods and their custom things that they build and design and program and, and put out there for all of us to consume and use and enjoy. Take that as you will, that's the truth straight from my mouth. Anyways, 
Thank you all so much for your support and thanks for watching. You all stay awesome and I'll see you in my next video. See you guys.